Hey guys, it's Derica with Derica's Designs. Um, this is going to be a very quick video on how to make the six inch top hats. If you've purchased the pattern, they are um, ready to be, if you purchase the digital file, print these out, you should have four pages. And um, if, you per if you received it in the mail, then these are exactly what you received because I just printed these out from the zip file. So first thing we want to do is to cut out your pieces. Now this dotted line that I'm cutting right here, please excuse the birds. They are going to um, you know, make comments about this entire thing, but we're going to get through it. Okay, so, so cut out your pieces. And the piece on um, page A will have to connect with the piece on page B, and you just tape them together. Um, the, the hat's a little bit bigger than a standard sheet of paper, so. Some of this I have pre-prepped because I didn't want this video to go on forever. Um, I know things can get very um, long and detailed and I didn't want to put you all through that. So you have your piece from page A and your piece from page B and just put them together. A piece of scotch tape and just tape it. Now I have already cut out the pieces on this uh, poster board. This is a great thing to use to keep your pattern because um, the paper can be kind of flimsy and you know, you, you can use it over and over again, but I like to put my patterns on this poster board. Okay, Jasper. And that way I can uh, keep it forever. And what I'll do is I'll write on it what it is, um, any kind of notes, any kind of trips or tips or tricks or anything that I might need um, next year when I pull this pattern out again. Now page C has the top of the hat and then the items that are needed. Um, really it's very simple. You can do this with a cardboard box. You can make it with um, an old cereal box. You can do, you can use whatever um, base that you want to, but just remember that anything, anything paper based, if it gets wet, it will be ruined. So if your customer lives in an area where they have a lot of um, hold on a, sec. a lot of you know moisture in the mornings maybe um, maybe between their storm door and their door their regular door they have a little bit of moisture I mean that's not unusual for some people um, a paper based hat might get ruined so just keep be mindful of that I prefer to use the foam now that I know better but you know I used to do the paper all the time as well so. Um, it's not a, not a deal breaker if you use paper-based products, just, you know, know your customer and know what they're going to, where they're going to hang it. You know, your deco mesh might be able to sit out and get moist, get wet and not have a problem. Ribbons can sometimes get wet and not have problems, but your attachments don't always do well if they get, even just the morning mildew. Or the morning, not mildew, you know, morning dew, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, sometimes it can ruin them. So this is the brim of the hat. It's on page D. And the circle in the middle is optional. If you're just going to put the, this top hat into a wreath, you don't need to cut the bottom circle out. But if you're going to use it to put on top of a skull or a mannequin head or something where you're actually going to glue it on top of something, then you would want to cut the circle. I mean, you would want to have this. Um, it's just up to you. It's however you're going to use the top hats. If you're putting it on a centerpiece, obviously you don't need this hole here unless you plan to use the hole to secure it with something, over something, you know. So I'm going to cut it out anywhere. And this down here at the bottom, it's called a joining strip. I only use this if I'm using foam. So this is totally optional. This is absolutely not um, a big deal. If you're using a paper product or something that is thin, 
when you fold over the edges and the back of the hat, there will be very minimal gap like this. You fold this over like that, you're really not going to see any kind of gap there. But for the same, if you use foam and you fold it over on top of itself, you're going to have that little ledge there. I mean, it, you can't hide that. So it's not a big deal. It's the back of the hat. If that does not matter to you at all, then absolutely um, this joining strip is, is not necessary. Don't worry about it. Not a big deal. But for me, when I make these items and I sell them, I like the back of the hat to look professional and finished. So I want to put the joining strip in there to hold the two pieces together so there isn't this big overlap gap thing. So personal preference, absolutely not necessary um, depending on, now if you're putting it in a centerpiece and there's not gonna be much behind it, then you may want a pretty finished back of your hat. So um, just think about it in those, those ways. Um, totally up to you. Okay, so first, we have this piece that we cut these out and we traced it. Whoops, that's the foam. We're going to start with the paper. We traced all three of the pieces. So this is my pattern. And then I put the pieces here. I did not cut the hole on this one on the bottom because I didn't think we we're going to need it. This is made of that thin poster board. It's, you know, it's, I don't know. For me, this is not my first choice, but it is an option, especially if you just want to do a real quick, simple one. So um, I have some fabrics already cut over here because we're working on Halloween at the moment. So I just grabbed some stuff we already had cut. So um, let's do let's do this. Oh, well, see this fabric. Okay, it's it's not quite big enough, but guys, I'm gonna make it work because I don't want to have to go and cut a bunch more fabric. It doesn't make any sense to do that. So we are going to get it on here the best we can. Oh, let's see, it looks like that's the best place for it. And so my hat, I'm gonna cut this down about a quarter of an inch and it's just gonna be a five and a three quarter inch top hat and not six inch. So honestly, not a big deal. So we're gonna throw some hot glue on here. And um, these hats, you know, how comfortable you are with your hot glue gun is probably going to be something you'll have to practice. If you see your glue gun isn't something you use on a daily basis, then you know practice with it make some you know just cardboard top hats and stuff get yourself comfortable because you really really need to be able to use your glue gun um you know a lot this is that's that's part of this whole pattern here so we're going to trim off these ends here and then i'm going to cut this down because my fabric wasn't quite that big no big deal for this Demonstration, it doesn't matter what size the hat is because you do it the same way with whatever size. It all, that also lets you know if you cut down your pattern, you can make smaller top hats. If you blow up your pattern, you can make bigger top hats. Um, you can, especially if you have the digital download, you can kind of blow it up and make it bigger. And then, so as you can see on this, I left a little bit of fabric hanging over this edge, just a little bit. And once again, that's just me wanting a finished backside. So you take it and I just flip it over in my hand like that and I hold this. I put a line of glue, don't have to do a lot. You don't want it oogin out everywhere, getting all over your fingers. And then you take this and just set it on there. And you're gonna, I overlapped a good half an inch. So don't be afraid, you don't, don't uh, short yourself. And like I said, like the glue ooze out all over onto your fingers. So now we have this little flap of fabric that I had left, and I like to just put a little bit of, you don't need a lot, and see how it just, it makes it nice and flat. You hardly even know it's there. I mean, if you didn't see, you can barely see the line. So that's just me, you know, when I make things, I like to finish off the front and the back if possible, or at least, at least make the back, you know, somewhat nice looking. So now you have this cone and I liked, if you eyeball it, if you take it and just kind of look at it, you can kind of tell if there's a little bit of a, you know, I, I kind of cut it freehand so it wasn't perfectly straight. But if you set it down and it teeter totters, just give it a little, like that one teeter totters pretty bad. 
So we're gonna we're gonna give this a little, just flatten it out a little bit. Especially if you're using paper. With a foam, you have a little bit of give because you're pushing the foam. You're gonna push the foam into the foam, and it's going to have more to grab onto. With the paper, it's really thin, and you're not gonna have a lot to grab onto. So, okay. So for the circles here, you can put glue on this, and then you can get this and put this on there. Um, again, this is not quite big enough, so I'm going to cut this down a little bit. But personally me, I like to put the fabric upside down here and glue this thing. And then just flip it over. It's so much easier just to drop that on there than it is to try to make it fit perfectly, you know. And like this one, see how the fabric is bigger? If I get it where you can see it. The fabric is bigger than, this is ideal, because no matter how you drop this, even if you drop it way over here, it's still covered. If you drop it, you know, you don't have to be dead center with it. Always cut your fabric just, just, a, just a little bit bigger than the actual pattern that you're working with. It just gives you with that little bit of wiggle room. And you're going to trim it off anyway, so it does not matter. Okay. So then you have this piece, this is the top, the smaller one is always the top, the brim is the bigger one. Just kind of round out your thing, because the paper likes to get all oblong on you. And this is what you can, you can either glue all around this, and you'll have to put like two or three different lines of glue on this, or what I do, because I'm comfortable with my glue gun, is I glue the edge of this. Now you do whatever you're comfortable with, you're going to trim it off and you're going to put pretty trims over it when you're done. So don't be afraid if you get glue all over. So then you just set it on there. Okay, and you can see, I mean, there's glue globs coming out all over the place, not a big deal. When this cools off, we're gonna trim all this excess stuff off of there. Now this one, which I didn't do very well with this one, I'm just going to trim it off, you know. The brim, so basically the this the brim of the hat is going to be a little bit smaller because the hat was a little bit shorter, so you know, it'll all work out in the end. We're just going to trim it off. I just, I didn't want to go and pull out more fabric. I just wanted to use what we had out here. It, you know, it's just easier that way. Easier for me. Sorry, I'm maneuvering around wires. I don't want to pull everything down on me. And I had a couple pieces of felt. Um, I like to use felt on the underside. Um, well, uh, really, it doesn't matter. You can use whatever you like. Um, felt is the preferred f fabric for me to use on top of the foam, on top of these top hats. It just looks the best. But honestly, don't don't limit yourself. You can get whatever whatever look you need. So now I'm going to go around that and just drop this onto the felt. Uh, it, gives it, it makes it a little thicker, gives it, especially if you're using this paper, it gives it a little softer feel. Um, and I just like the way the felt is underneath. Now, if you were gonna put this on a mannequin or a skull, obviously you would have cut the hole in the center just to make it easier to make it nestle down on top of whatever you want to glue it to. But for this one, we're not going to do all that. Um, the decoration part is totally up to you. I'm just here to give you guys the tools to make the top hat and how you put it all together and how you decorate it, 100% up to you. Ah. So, now we have this cute little cone. There is that little white line up here, but we're gonna put some trim over that. If there's anything ugly on your top hat, cover it with something pretty, guys. I always say that. You don't have to leave the ugly showing. So we're gonna round this out again, because um, this one, I wouldn't recommend putting a circle of glue on here unless you have the hole cut out, because you're not really gonna know how big to make the hole unless you draw. You could, I guess you could do this. You could draw, I'm gonna go ahead and draw it just so you guys can see what I'm doing here. You can draw 
and put glue on that. Let's try it that way this time. So we're just going, I haven't done it this way. I always do it the other way, but this, I'm gonna give it a shot. So I'm putting glue all over the what I just drew. Then I'm gonna set the hat on it. Hmm. Okay, tip, make sure you put the glue to the inside of what you drew, not on the line. Because <laughs> I can tell already that I didn't hit the glue on all sides because I put the glue on the line and not inside of the line. That's okay, it's still not going anywhere. I mean, it's still, it's still gonna glue on there. So then we're gonna take, excuse my head, we're just gonna take some trim. We're just gonna make it, make it pretty. And you can get these trims anywhere. I get them at Hobby Lobby at, in the fabric section where the, um, there's, there's two racks of little trim, rolls of trim. And, or you can, use, you can use yarn, you can use that chenille yarn. If you want, you can just, you can, you can just cut strips of ribbon if that's all you have, but, or other strips of fabric, but really, this GIMP stuff is really inexpensive and it's, you know, you can get it anywhere. The only problem with trims is they only usually come in little spools of maybe three to six feet. Um, I order wholesale and I typically order, you know, by the hundreds of yards. So um, it just doesn't make any sense for me only to get one little, you know, one of these little things wouldn't last me for ever, any time. So, um, I mean, that's pretty basic. If you wanted, you could put the trim down here around the bottom, you know, and just you just have to very slowly put the glue around it, put the trim on it, and then you can add whatever embellishment you want. I like to put feather boa around the center here because I think it looks good. And I like this one, how it is. It's got the, where are you guys? It's got, well, you can't see it because it's black, I'm sorry. But it's got the trim around this, the trim around the top, and then feather boa all the way around the center, and then you can put like glue one of those spiders on here um i don't have one handy but like one of these type of spiders or something some you could just do whatever you want with it but the bones of your top hat this is it um you know you have the cone the top the bottom and then you start adding the trims and the embellishments that of your choice so that is the paper one the paper one like I said, no problem, you can still use it. I just prefer to use, this is the foam. And this is white foam, this is a two millimeter foam. Um, at Hobby Lobby, you can get this two millimeter foam, which is basic, and you can also get a five millimeter, which I recommend for the brims if you're going to um, be putting trim on them. This one has the five millimeter, and it's got a much thicker trim down here. You can see, you can, you can get thicker than the other one that I was using because you have more, more meat to glue it to. So I like using the five millimeter on the brim. If you go to Hobby Lobby in the children's craft section, they have racks of all different color foams. On the tops are the two millimeters. And then if you go to the bottom racks, they're the five millimeters down there. So, but for this one, I have, these are, everything I've cut from here is all the two millimeter because it's just what I, I have it on hand and that's what we're using right now. So. I pulled out some cool fabric, and this is probably not going to be big enough either. Oh no, it just fits. This is just some skull fabric we were using. So whenever you're hot gluing onto a surface like this, I mean, I don't mind sounding like a broken record, but this is the easiest way to do this is to place your hand on it and hold it. Take whatever, flop it over. Keep, don't move your other hand though. Keep it held down. Put some glue over there and then put this back and this is stretchy fabric so it's like a lycra so it's going to stretch and then just flatten it out and then you can turn it around flip it over Whoop. this is why i like using the foam it just it's such a better base to use and it is waterproof so you know Okay, so you have that all glued on there, and we're going to go around, and I'm going to trim, 
<laughs> this fabric is so flimsy it's hard to do this. Okay, so we'll hold it like this. I'm going to trim off all the extra fabric just to make it look finished. Anywhere that you have fabric poking through. And again, if, it's always better to cut your fabric just a little bit bigger than what your pattern is. You can always trim it down, but you certainly can't get it back once you cut it off. So, okay, so again, just like on the paper one, I left a little flap, you can see, a little flap of extra on this. And that's just gonna fold over and make a finished looking back. Also, if I wanted to right now, I could take this, put this, glue this on here, and it would be okay. That, that's not a bad looking top hat. Nobody's gonna say you didn't finish it. But I'm gonna show you how to use the join-in strip. And this is just something that I use. You absolutely do not have to, okay? So it's gonna go on the inside of the end that does not have the extra fabric on it. So this is the side with the extra flap of fabric. So what I do, just do a really quick line, and you're gonna glue this about halfway onto it. So you're gonna have half of it on and half of it sticking off like that. And you guys can probably figure out why I call this the joining strip. What it does is it causes the two edges to butt together rather than overlap. And for me, it's just a more finished, smoother look. Guys, totally optional. Do not feel like this is something you have to do. If you're not comfortable, if this is a little bit more than what you want to hand, what you want to do, don't worry about it. But now you're going to glue on to this, not onto this, well, not yet onto the skeleton fabric there. I'm going to put some glue and you're going to just fold this over so that those ends of the top hat butt together and you kind of have to feel it because you have this I can well I can try to pull that flat back there and you can feel it but the foam it's so pliable you can really feel it you know with your fingers you can you can kind of maneuver it and push it together and make it um, I like to get my hand in there and push it down and get it all flat and make sure so now that you have this extra flap of fabric again so we're just going to put a little bit of glue just enough to hold it down don't burn your fingers um, and then smooth it down I like to just you know take my hand and just smooth it down so literally other than where the, the pattern doesn't match it's smooth like you can't even tell that there's a seam there because we put it together so that is just me and my OCD. You guys, come on, don't. <laughs> I think most of you have known me long enough to know that I tend to be a little bit OCD about those stupid little details that other people could not care less about. So, <laughs> so we're going to put this aside to let it cool off. And we're going to do our top here. Now this one, how about with this one, we will cut the center out. Let me get the... Now you can use an X-Acto knife to cut the center out. That is fine. Um, or you can just use scissors. Foam is very easy to work with. Oops. That, that. Since you're going to glue this onto something, don't worry about it being perfect. Just poke a hole in there. And then I just start pinwheeling it. So you just start cutting. You're gonna glue this on top of a mannequin head or a skull, so don't worry about your circle being all you know, circle like it can be, it can be all wonky. It's okay because you're going to set it on something, and you're going to put glue all around the inside of this hole, and then put it onto your skull or whatever it is you're you're gluing it to. So, don't be afraid to do that. So, so we're going to do the same thing with this like we did before. Um, if you try to put glue on the fabric, the, the fabric, you know, it moves around on the table, and your glue is going to make it all wrinkled. It's going to be really annoying. You're going to be so. You're always glue to your most uh, hard surface or whatever's not going to bunch up on you or you know create a mess. So I put glue on the big circle and then just set it down on there. We're gonna let that one cool. We're gonna get the top of the hat and do the same thing. Just throw some glue on there. Now you're gonna trim these edges, so don't worry about it. Don't. There's no, nothing. 
you can't fix later or hide with trims. So now we're going to take this top. Um, sorry, I keep getting out of the camera. I'm not sure. We're going to take the top and we're going to set it onto this. Again, you can do glue onto this one on the table, but this is a little bit thicker. For me, it's a little bit easier. You just take your glue gun, go all the way around. Don't let it drip on your arm or your wrist or anything. Really pay attention to it. Don't get it so thick that this is coming down onto your hand, okay? And then just set it. Make sure, go all the way around and make sure, make sure you know you're not hanging over the edge. And then then push it down, and let that. And you're gonna let that cool a little bit. And then take this one back again. And we're gonna trim off all this wonky this fabric. This is a very thin, stretchy nylon. I do not recommend this fabric at all because look, I mean, it's just it's so difficult to work with. But come on, look at the pattern. <laughs> I mean, the shimmery skulls is amazing. So. You know, you have to uh, make sacrifices sometimes. I love it. Same thing in the center. We're going to put a little hole in it. And we're just going to go around, make little snips all the way around. Again, nobody's going to see this. Your cone is going to go right over the top of this, so don't worry about being all perfect. And this is so not perfect. If I had more time, I would clean it up. But for now, that's going to be good. And you can see, it's not so great. It's not the greatest cut in the world, but that's okay. And we're going to do the same thing with the felt. So we're going to go around this. Oh, need another glue stick. Jeez Louise. You guys see how much glue I go through? Let me tell you. I go through 25-pound boxes about every two to three months. It's a lot of glue. A lot of glue sticks. So let me put that on there. And felt is a little bit stretchy, but it's so wonderful um, to work with. Especially if you're if you're wanting to do like a really nice looking hat, I recommend using if you want it to be smooth and you want it to look like maybe a like one of those steampunk type hats or one of the really pretty hats that people put on those mannequin heads. I'm not sure where people buy those, but somebody out there must have an Etsy shop that makes really pretty elaborate ones. Use felt or velvet or uh, maybe even a wool or something very thick and rich. You know, you just, to me, you can uh, really, really make it look like a very nice top hat. Almost like a real, like use the real fabrics. If you want to spend a little bit of extra money, you know, velvet is not cheap, but it looks really pretty. So once again, just go around and trim. Don't don't be perfect. You're gonna put you're gonna glue something pretty on this. So just kind of get the excess excess off, so it's easier to glue things to it. Okay, so you have that. Now we're going to get more trash out of the way. We're gonna trim this one too. Not not a lot to trim here, but. Um, just kind of get those little bits off. It just looks better if it's it's easier to glue the trim to it if it's flat and not all warbly. And any scissors can cut through this foam. You do not have to use Exactos or you know rotary cutters or any of that stuff. You can just use scissors. Oops, we have a little bit that I missed. Just use any scissors. Um. You know, you don't want to use, like, if you have good sewing scissors or something or something, you don't use those. But if you have ribbon scissors that you cut through ribbon wires and stuff with, they'll be fine. As long as they have a good, you know, handle a good grip on them. Okay, so, well, let's see. I didn't see this one teeter-totters a little bit. So I'm going to come down here and literally, guys, just eyeball it. Just t put it out in front of you. Let's see if I can get the camera. And just kind of see, is there anything that's kind of poking up? And I can see right here, we've got a little bitty um, hump in this bottom piece. So I'm just going to go all the way around it, trim it out. There, no, no. It warbles a little, but not, not enough, not like it was. So I'm going to, with this one, you have to put the glue on this because I'm afraid if you didn't did it around the hole, you might... Um, miss it. So here, there we go. And just make sure none of the hole is pocket popping through, and then you want to hold it down. 
give it a second to grab onto all that fabric there. I just went to grab a little feather boa because I like feather boas on this. I think it's super cute, especially with these skulls. Now that's not completely cooled yet, but we can still work on the trim. So let's see, let's do, sorry my big head again, let's do just some basic glitter black trim on this. And you can see the big white lines and we're going to get rid of those big ugly white foam pieces. Obviously if you use black foam it wouldn't be so noticeable, but I couldn't do black because you wouldn't be able to see it because my um, cutting board is are black. So I wanted to make sure you guys could see this, so that's why I did the white foam. run it down you don't have to be fast you can just do a little piece at a time whatever you're comfortable with <gasps> the natives are getting restless so it must be almost time to finish up here okay so we did around there now with the boa you could you could do the boa around the very bottom or like I like to put it in here because it hides all the little imperfections um, either way it doesn't matter I'm gonna go ahead and snip this and we're gonna get feathers everywhere because that's the fun of using feather boa Whew, Lord just make sure when you throw them away all these little you put them down in your trash can because the next thing you throw on top of them it's gonna foof them all out again Oh Lord. Okay. So then I take it and I put glue all the way, just lob it on there all the way around. And I figure out where the front is. The front is facing me. And then I just stick it on there. And just kind of feel, make sure it's sticking everywhere. And the, at the end back here, you might have to put a little bit more. Kind of hold the ends down so they don't poke up. Now to attach these, to a wreath or centerpiece or whatever you're doing just poke holes in the foam poke holes run wire through it you can put wire through the top i mean this is just foam you can put stuff through the top if you, if you needed to like if it was if it was teetering um, but just poke holes you can use an actual hole poke um, hole punch thing or just literally just use your scissors make a hole and run the wire through you don't have to have anything fancy um, this is what the bottom looks like. It's just plain. Um, and I'm going to put a little more trim because you can never have enough to hide this now. Now this trim is wider than the 2 millimeter foam on here, but honestly it's not going to matter. Once you get it on there, you're not going to be able to tell. It's going, oops, it's going to be just fine. That's why I do prefer to use the 5 millimeter on the brim of the hat because it does give you more meat to glue this trim to, but you don't have to. You can make this top hat out of one piece of the 12 by 18 foam, which is, if you buy the glittered, I think it's a dollar fifty or a dollar ninety, something like that. So you can make a top hat for a dollar ninety, a dollar fifty. And then whatever you put on it is just whatever pennies or whatever, you know, you just you can make this for under three dollars depending on what you get to put on it so um, if you buy you know a half a yard of a really cool fabric that you like or a little bit of felt um you're looking at pennies i mean it doesn't cost that much you know and you can get a lot if you half a yard of fabric you can get i would say at least two maybe even three top hats out of that so um very inexpensive very inexpensive it's just a matter of finding all the things you like and putting them you know putting it together so there is that one these are the two top hats for tonight Oof, we have glue strings I would normally put some more trim around this the base of this one and let's see what do I have over here I have this one I'm sorry everything is over there because the way my table is set up <laughs> This is just a string, literally, 
and it's very thin, but it would cover that just perfectly. It would take some skill with the glue gun not to get globs of glue around it, but you could use it. It's so thin, you can't really use a bigger trim on this thin paper, the cardboard paper, but you can, um, you can use this rope. You just have to, if you have to have, if you have like a detailed glue gun that has a really tiny tip on it, that's probably ideal. I personally prefer to use this foam and big, chunky, heavy, you know, not heavy, but you know, it's, it's got more, um, more to glue things to. And of course you could always add more to this, but that is the basics of the top hats. Now I've shown you a few different designs. Um, this one is super cute. It's, you know, 4th of July. This is going to require more fabrics to be purchased, little glue-on stars. This is that um, chenille yarn that I used as a trim. The thin one, not the big chunky one like we like to use on the, on the balls, but um, it makes a really cute this felt and then a little bit of striped fabric. And this one I made earlier, it's a buffalo plaid, white buffalo plaid on the paper. This is not the uh, foam, this one was on paper. Glued the little snowman head to it. Um, probably should do something else down here with it. I just haven't gotten that far. But you can see how cute they are. I mean, you can kind of just do about anything with them. Of course, this is the one that inspired all of this. This one, I actually curled up the ends of the, to make it like a taco. Um, I'm getting, you know, Tammy fever here. Everything goes after food. So what I did was I, um, I cut the edges just a little bit, and then when I glued the foam on there, I cupped it like that and I held it for a good five minutes. I did not allow it to come off, and then when it comes out, it's glued upward. So this one is kind of the style people are using to put on the mannequin heads. They have a, more of a curled brim on it. Now, um, you, can just, you can really just do about anything with these. Um, just use your imagination and have fun with it. So I hope you all get lots of usage out of your pattern. Um, be sure to uh, send pictures and show pictures on the group page of what you've made. Um, give people ideas on what they can do because, you know, everybody likes to see what everyone else is making. So and especially me because, you know, I do this all day long and I run out of ideas too. I mean, it's hard. It's hard to just constantly be pumping out ideas all the time. So I love to see what you, what your guys' vision is on some of this stuff. And uh, just have some fun with it. Have some fun with it. And don't worry about being a perfectionist. Just uh, practice a few times on an old cereal box. And once you feel comfortable with your glue gun and using, um, getting really close, you know, with it and not burning yourself, then move on to maybe a piece of foam. Um, you're looking at a five to ten dollar investment to make two or three top hats, depending on what what you like. So you know, just have a ball, and uh, let me see what you're making, guys. Okay. Hope this uh, was informative for you. Of course, if you have questions, don't hesitate to send me a message. You can send it on um, Facebook or through the web page at DerekasDesigns.com, and uh, you know I'll help in any way I can to uh, make you know, make this easier for you or whatever you need. Okay. You all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much.